Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today for my review of the 1973 horror anthology film Vault of Horror. Kind of like a sequel to Tales from the Crypt. It's got a similar anthology story concept, but I will say the two films aren't really related. You could watch Vault of Horror without watching Tales from the Crypt and easily understand it as the stories don't really connect all that much. Uh, this film... Uh, was kind of a mixed bag for me. I did enjoy it for the most part, but once again, there was one story in particular that I thought could have been cut. Once again, there were five stories plus the wraparound, and this film's even a bit shorter from Tales from the Crypt. It's only like 86 minutes, so it definitely felt like one of the stories kind of didn't really work for me, but I will get to that. So we'll go in order. Uh, start with the first tale, which was called Midnight Mass, starring Daniel Massey. This one's about a man who wants uh, an inheritance, and he'll go to pretty much any lengths to get it. So he goes to this, uh, I guess I'll call it a strange town without giving too much away, and things kind of proceed from there. This one's very predictable. You can see what's coming from a mile off, even if you don't watch a lot of these types of films. But the story was okay, it was done well, and it was well acted and interesting. Overall, I thought this one was just kind of average, but it's fine, and it was a decent way to start off the collection of stories. The next one was called The Neat Job, starring Terry Thomas and Glynis Johns. This is what I like to call the comedy segment. Not all of them, but some of these old horror anthology type movies, even some of the newer ones, try to have like a lighter segment or a, a comedy horror segment. And a lot of times, to be truthful, I don't really like these. I feel like they disrupt the flow, even though I know what they're going for. And they're just not done that well and not that funny. But... The Neat Job is an exception to this rule. This was actually my favorite story of all five, and it shocked me as well. So The Neat Job is basically about a man who's very organized, very neat, maybe a bit too much so you could say, and he gets married to a woman who is not this way at all. So as you can imagine, comedy ensues, and even though I kind of saw where this one was going, I thought Terry Thomas and especially Glynis Johns were great. Um, and this, and I laughed the whole way through this thing, and the ending was just absolutely hilarious. I laughed out loud a couple times in this one, so I love the neat job, and I highly recommend it. The next story was called This Trick Will Kill You, and this is probably the weirdest of the bunch. It's not really that unique of a, a concept. It stars Kurt Jurgens, who gives an excellent performance, I have to say, and it's about a magician who's kind of on a little vacation, I guess, and he's kind of scouting, I guess you could say, for a new magic trick for his act. And uh, this one did some things I liked, but it was also just kind of weird, and the ending didn't totally convince me uh, what they were trying to do. But this one's kind of unique, and it, it was in the average category. I think I liked it slightly better than the first story, Midnight Mass, but it's just okay. This one's a bit slower as well, in my opinion. Uh, the next story, number four, was called Bargain and Death. This is easily the weakest segment and the one I would have cut. It's kind of very short anyway and underdeveloped, so this one's been done a million times. It's about a man who wants to fake his death to collect an insurance policy, basically. The uh, lead actor of the segment, Michael Craig, is good, but he's kind of not given a lot to do, really. And this one was kind of a serious topic that kind of tried to mix in some weird humor with these other two side characters. And it just didn't, it's not terrible, but it really didn't come together for me. Like I said, it kind of ends abruptly. I will give it credit though, because the twist ending didn't go exactly how I thought it would. I kind of figured it out, but they did a few little things here and there to change it up, which I appreciated. But I still didn't think this segment was all that effective. And then we go to the last segment, which was definitely the second best, in my opinion, which was called uh, Drawn Quartered, I believe. And it's about a man who wants revenge, an artist, on those who he feels that wronged him, kind of cheated him out of money for some of his artwork, things like that. So, of course, he tries to use voodoo. And I don't think I need to tell you, if you've watched any horror movies, <laughs> how this goes. Uh, despite not having that 
you know, interesting of a concept in my opinion, or definitely not original. It's a well done, it's well acted. Some may recognize actor Tom Baker from Doctor Who. He stars in this segment and he does a good job. And this segment was pretty creepy and pretty violent for the early 70s, I have to say. I did watch the unrated version of this, but this one's got some gore in it, I'll say that. But it's just a creepy, disturbing tale. It was very suspenseful. And even though I predicted uh, the ending when the episode first started, uh, I still thought it was just very good and very well done overall, and I would highly recommend it. So if I had to rate these segments, I would say The Neat Job and Drawn Quartered are great. Uh, Midnight Mess and This Trickle Kill you are pretty good. And Bargain and Death I didn't really care for, although it has a few good things about it. As far as the wraparound story, it's very similar to the one in Tales from the Crypt. That's not really a big spoiler. It's pretty easy to read that right away. But I will say I thought this one, the ending of it, was actually a little better uh, the way it was presented than the one in Tales from the Crypt. So overall, I think Vault of Horror is another winner. I enjoyed it about as much as Tales from the Crypt. Some segments were better than others for me. But as I always say with these anthologies, others may disagree with me on what the best segments were, which is totally okay. So that'll do it for my review of the 1973 film Vault of Horror. As always, thanks for watching.